All right. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Adobe Live. My name is Terry White. It's my pleasure to be here once again, streaming live on a Friday, on a sunny, hot Friday here in the ATL. Hey, Shauna. Um, so I see people joining in from all over the world and all over the different platforms, including, uh, of course, Behance, uh, Adobe Live, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, and did I say LinkedIn? LinkedIn. So welcome, everyone. YouTube proper, if I didn't say that already. Welcome, welcome, welcome. But uh, just let's get a couple of housekeeping things out of the way first. As you know, if you've been here before, the best chat experience is going to be over at b.net slash Adobe Live. So that's that's the main chat that I'll pay attention to, even though I see people that are saying they're up early on LinkedIn and Me Too and Simon saying hello on YouTube. Um, I won't get a chance to see all of those because I'll be paying attention to people like James and Ozzy and Jan and Fatima and uh, Sam Peterson and Fred, so forth and so on, and Bobby Orlando. So people are looking forward to the session today. Thanks, Bobby. And I'll, I'll if I see your question on the other, other window, I'll try to answer it. But the main window I'm going to be paying attention to is b.net slash Adobe Live as it appears above my head to the right or to the left, depending on which way you're looking. All right, <clears throat> with that said, today is gonna be a fun one. I have a little game we're gonna play. Ooh, games on the live stream. We'll see how this goes. Uh, but we're gonna play a game. But today's topic is first and foremost, how to take better photos or how to shoot better photos with your smartphone. <clears throat> Whether you you getting a new iPhone today, or you're getting, uh, or you have an old iPhone, or you have an Android, or you have a uh, Samsung, a, a Google Pixel, whatever it is, how to take better pictures with that. So this is not a hardware thing. This is not a go buy a new phone so you can get better pictures. This is a technique thing to take better pictures with whatever phone you have. So that's what we're gonna do today. All right, um, so yeah, Jan said, hey, I got my new phone last year. So again, you're going to see some examples today of old phones. So it's, it's not necessarily this is all about just the new stuff. Um, so with that said, let's get into uh, today's topic. Let me let me fire up a, a deck here that I'm going to present from. You're going to see a lot of slides today. Don't worry. Uh, hopefully there'll be some time at the end for some actual live demo, but I cover everything that I want to talk about in the slides because it's easier. It's easier to do show and tell than it is to set up everything in the studio and try and capture every single example. It, maybe one day we'll do that where we we'll bring in uh, live subjects and all that to just show it. But anyway, uh, we're going to just do slides to make life easier today. And again, I have a, I have a, a set set up to do some actual shots. But uh, if we don't get to that, everything will be covered in the slides. Okay, anyway, uh, let's go ahead and switch over to my, oh, hang on, I said I was gonna start this, I didn't. There we go, now let's switch over to my desktop. And let's get rid of that. All right, so the QR code on the screen is just my social media. You, there will be two more QR codes that you will need to pay attention to. Uh, one's gonna be for the game, that's coming up in a few seconds. And then there's one at the end, because I will mention some various gear. And rather than try and flood the chat with links, I'll just have a gear guide at the end. You can just scan the QR code for that gear guide, and then you'll have everything that I talked about in the class today. All right. So with that said, uh, let's go ahead and flipped images. I'm not sure what that means. So someone on a couple, uh, someone's on LinkedIn saying flipped images. I, I don't know what that means. I'm looking at it. It looks good to me. Okay, so here we go. Uh, let's talk about today's topic: how to get, how to take better photos with your smartphone. So the camera that you always have with you—that's what we're talking about today. Uh, I have had cameras that are will cost a few hundred dollars. I've had cameras that cost several thousand dollars, professional cameras. But honestly, the camera I use the most is the one I always have in my pocket. So that's why smartphone photography has really come a long way. And, and, and I'm, by the way, just so we make it clear, so if people can go back and watch this video and, and, and get to this part where I say, I am not advocating or saying that your smartphone replaces professional photography gear. I'm not saying that it's better 
than professional photography gear, you know, professional DSLRs and mirrorless cameras. I am saying that it is a category that cannot be ignored because there will be way millions more people shooting with smartphones than there ever will be with professional cameras. Professional cameras have a place, they probably will for decades to come, but smartphone cameras can't be ignored. All right, now they got the disclaimer out of the way. Let's, let's look at how far they've actually come. Um, I was going through my Lightroom catalog preparing for today, and I, I looked at some old images because I just filtered on images shot with smartphones. And uh, one of the first images that I had in my Lightroom was from an iPhone 3GS back in 2009. And while the cameras back then, the smartphones, could take an okay picture, like you knew what the picture was. I know that's a red barn I, in a, some field I can, and with, on a bad sunlit day. Uh, I can see what it is. But the problem with the technology, uh, you know, almost two decades ago, was that the pixels themselves didn't look good. And so when the pixels don't look good, you can't expect the image to really look good, especially if you blow it up or print it or do anything like that real with it. So back then, that's, you know, it, it, that's why you were basically, the uh, smartphones, honestly, from a photography standpoint, were a joke. They, we joked about it. It's like, oh, he took that with his phone. Oh, he's a, he's a guy with a camera. Oh, he came in with a smartphone. Like, we would laugh at you if you came in with a smartphone back then, because not that you weren't good, not that you didn't know what you were doing, the technology back then wasn't good enough. So, for example, these are the pixels from that camera. Look at look at how just grainy and everything looks and just, it's already a bad day to take that photo, but it made it even worse with the pixels coming from that camera almost two decades ago. Now, here's one that I took with, on the right from an iPhone 11 Pro uh, a couple years ago. And just, oh, just look at the pixel difference. That's zoomed in as well on the right-hand side. And you can just see a stark contrast in the quality of the pixels of today's smartphones compared to phones from years and years and years ago. Uh, Sam, Z Sam says, I only recently learned that iPhones can, hand uh, can view and handle raw images, which pleasantly surprised me. Not only can they view and handle them, they shoot them. We've been, and someone corrected me, well, not corrected me, but like, well, corrected me. I did a session for a conference not too long ago, and I was saying that, uh, and we're going to talk about this, how the iPhone has supported shooting RAW since at least the iPhone 7, 7 Plus. And they told me, no, it was a 6S. How many years ago was that? So when I say supported shooting it, I don't mean that if you went to the, to the camera app on the phone, you could choose RAW, because back then you couldn't. Apple didn't open up RAW from their camera app until the iPhone 12 Pro, and I'm sorry, iPhone 12 Pro, 13 Pro, one of those, and of course now the newest one, the 14 Pro, then only the Pros. So only the Pro models could shoot in RAW. However, Adobe, Lightroom on your phone could shoot in RAW all the way back to the iPhone success. And of course, Androids of whatever error that were back then as well. So, uh, so Rick just uh, reminded me, 12 Pro is when Apple opened up shooting RAW on the phone from the native camera. Um, yep, and that's what we're talking about, Christina. Samsung takes pictures in DNG format. That's what we're meant, that's what we're talking about, RAW. All right, and, and again, I, this is not a, a Samsung versus iPhone thing. You'll see me talk about both. You'll see me demonstrate both, or not demonstrate, but you'll see me show images from both. So I, I've used both, I have both. It's not a, this, this versus that. It's whatever you're using, whichever one you have. We're going to show you how to use it better. Okay, now we get to play a game. So you're going to fire up your web browser, and you're going to uh, go to this URL. And I'm going to jump out of the slides and go to this URL. I'm going to show you 12 pictures, and I want you to decide. You're not going to have any other information other than looking at the pictures whether they were shot on a smartphone, iOS, Android, or shot with a DSLR or mirrorless. And I will give you one hint. It's not going to make it any easier, but I'll give you a hint. In every single one of those scenarios, I had both cameras with me. 
So I had a professional camera with me and a smartphone with me. You tell me if you can decide, you can pick which ones were shot with a smartphone, which ones were smart shot with the um, with a uh, professional camera, we'll call it that. All right, so thanks, Sam. Just put it in the chat. Um, so head over to poll. I'm going to fire up, probably just asking you for your name right now. I haven't uh, started the poll yet. But um, head over to pollev, P-O-L-L-E-V dot com slash my name, Terry White. All right, or you can even text it if you want to do it on your phone. Now, I also will tell you, when you see the first image, the choice between mirrorless, I'm sorry, smartphone or DSLR, you have to scroll up to see it. Like, I was like, where are the choices? You have to scroll the image up because it's a portrait image. All right, let me get out of the slide so I can jump into the poll. All right, let's head over to my browser. I've got the poll. Let's go ahead and present it. And you guys can start your voting now. It should have come up on your screen if you've gone to pollev.com. Um, all right, so I see some votes coming in and you tell me what I shot this with. And I had both cameras with me every single time. And I'm gonna, I need to jot down your responses because I'm not gonna remember, hang on. Fire up my notes. Oh, I didn't mean to do that. Let's go back to it. Oh, hang on. There we go. So keep voting, keep voting. I'll switch to the next image in a minute. Just let me fire up a note so I can keep track of how, what percentages you guys guessed. And I have a poker face, so I'm not gonna tell you you're right or wrong, and you only get to pick one. All right, uh, smartphone versus DSLR mirrorless. I'm just typing this in and okay. So for number one, 77% said smartphone and of course, or 75% said smartphone and okay, it keeps going up. <laughs> I'll give you guys another second or two. 77, 70, 23. All right, 10 more seconds because we got 12 of these to get through. All right, are we done? 77, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say we're done. 77 versus 25. Okay, number two. Let's go to the next photo. Go back to the browser. Next photo. This was in Iceland. And by the way, I shot all of these. So this isn't like stock or anything. These are all my shots. 50-50, I'll give you guys a few seconds to vote. Okay. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five. Rick's asking a good question. Are they straight out of the camera? No, I always do a little, you know, Lightroom. They're not heavy retouch though. Just a little few Lightroom adjustments. So no, none of them are probably straight out of the camera. All right. Okay, um, that's it. So we'll count this one now. So we got 32 and 68. Okay, all right, next, next one. Number three. Always had both with me. What did I shoot this portrait with? Give you guys 10 more seconds. How do you vote? You head over to the URL at the top of the screen. So at the top of each screen, you see a URL, and then you can see your vote and your percentages would be counted there. So head over to pollev.com slash Terry White and you'll see each image as I bring it up. All right, 10 more seconds, 10, nine, eight, Okay, lock that in at 32 versus 68. 
All right, next photo. Number four, also Iceland, same trip, just pointed a different way. Okay. What prize do you get? You get to be smart if you guessed right. <laughs> I don't have a way to give away prizes. I would love to give away prizes. So Adobe Live team, if you're watching this, Give me a way to give award people prizes if they get it all right. Okay, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Thanks, Sam, for popping that in the chat again. And we're going to lock this one in at 68 versus 32. That sounds familiar. Last time it was the other way around. Okay, let's go to the next one. Photo number five. Classic sunset. Got to have a sunset no matter what you do. Right? You can't have a beautiful sunset out on the water if you don't take a photo of it. Or sunrise. Sunrise. This is actually sunrise, I believe. Because I'm like, I don't very often do sunsets, but I will get up early for a sunrise. All right. you guys a few more seconds free subscription for a year sure works for me <laughs> I don't care but I'd have to get it someone to give it to you that's the problem all right looks like the voting has stopped on that one so we'll lock that one in at 76 versus 24 all right, and number photo number six. Studio shot. So Gina says, I noticed that my photo or my phone takes uh, great photos if it's natural light. Yeah, because especially back in the day, uh, light matter a lot more than it does now, but it certainly like it was it was make or break the photo You didn't have good light with a smartphone your images looked horrible Quality wise from the sensor from the pixels. All right, you guys are a little bit more evenly divided on this one So 47 percent 46 10 more seconds <laughs> You guys a few more seconds before I write it down it keeps changing 46 54 48 46, 48. Okay, lock it in at 46 versus 54. And next one. Photo number seven. Look at the sharpness of this one. I'll kind of give you a hint. Look at how sharp this photo is. <laughs> Gave you a hint. Oh, Sean, I'll cut off fingers on, in a heartbeat. I just try not to anymore. <laughs> so some of these aren't new. Some of these might have been older photos. I gave you a hint. If you still guessed wrong on this one, that's on you. Okay. A few more seconds. Whew. Look at those votes come in, changing that score. All right, almost evenly divided, interesting. 48 versus 52. We're almost done, folks, because you're probably tired of this now. I'm getting tired of it already. <laughs> so it's like, probably should have only done like eight photos because I'm ready for this to be done. Photo number eight of Lisa. This is Lisa, my young puppy. She's like going to be eight years old, I think, this weekend. Or Monday or Tuesday, I can't remember. All right. Look at that shallow depth of field. Trying to get, trying to drop hints. Some of you are taking it, some of you aren't. Hmm. 
Always have a spotter when you stand on the tracks, absolutely. You can see every little hair, all of her fur, all of her mane. It's awesome. Okay, lock this one in. A few more, folks. We're almost done. 54 versus 46. Okay. Photo number nine. I'll give you the story of this one. This is actually a hotel in Houston that was converted from an old bank. So this is the original vault door. I could not not get a shot of this. I actually submitted this and it's available on Adobe Stock. So uh, another hint, I'm selling this one on Adobe Stock. What would I have shot it with? Hmm. All right. Yeah, you can find this one on Adobe Stock. It just looks so impressive. All the little metal, little grain, the little details. I'm sure there's a ton of stories behind that. How much editing can you assume I did? Not much. Like a few sliders in Lightroom, no Photoshop. This is just slight retouching. Slight adjusting, not even retouching. On this one, uh, to submit, uh, this one, the only thing I did on this one to submit it to Adobe Stock, it had a brand name for the door, and I removed that because I can't submit the brand name. But that was it. Okay. 55 versus 45. Two more, or three more. Oh, I don't know why that one scrolled down. But anyway, uh, that is Sarah Carpenter in concert. Not, actually, it was a private concert. It was a private event. But she sang and she was great. I had never heard of her. She's a, you know, a youngster <laughs> that I had never heard of before uh, at an event. Okay. All right, let's lock this one in. 72, 28. Looks like the vaults in Harry Potter. I know I got to ask my uh, my daughter. Did you correct perspective? Because I know the cell phone kind of messes that up. Not just cell phones. Any lens can mess up perspective. So if it needed perspective adjustment, I did it. No matter what camera it came from. <laughs> I'm not going to give you any more clues. All right, uh, 74 verse 26, let's get on with it. All right, two more, last two. Now this one you should know, you saw me take it in my master class. Like you were there for this. <laughs> Did this shoot live? <laughs> if you weren't there, I mean, you were there, you remember what I was shooting this with. This should be a no brainer. This was like, you know, uh, what do you call it? A, uh, not a plant, um, a ringer. Yeah, this was a ringer. Some of you got it right, some of you didn't. Not gonna say who. All right, uh, one more after this, 29 versus 71. A lot of good voting on that one. That's all I'll say. Too late. <laughs> I saw some of those numbers come in. Too late. And this is in New York, um, standing on top of a roof. So this is not shot through glass. This is actually shot outside. I'll give you some clues. Look at the detail in the name at the bottom. You can actually see the name. Versus the perspective all the way out to the uh, tower. Free I think that's Freedom Tower. All the way out to the edge there. I'll just say it. That's all I'm going to say. Stand up on a very cold, windy roof to take this. This was back in the early spring, winter months. This was this year. But it was a while ago. All right, last one, 10 more seconds, then we can move on and get to the results. All right, that's it, 54 versus 46. 
All right, so I have your numbers. I have what you said. And it's very interesting what you said. 51 versus 49. Okay, I'll change it now since I'm still here. 51 versus 49. All right, so you're almost evenly half on that one. Okay, great. So let's get out of this. Let's go back to the deck. Let's scroll down the deck to the results. Start it with her and it finishes with her. All right, here we go. Photo number one. Shot with a Samsung Galaxy S22. And you guys basically said, this is what you said. 77% of you got it right. 25% of you got it not right. <laughs> All right, next one. Photo number two, iPhone 7 Plus. Only 32% um, of you got that one right because I, I kept throwing the Iceland in there. Oh, he only took his professional camera to Iceland. Remember, I said I had both cameras. So there you go. <laughs> All right, next one. Portrait. This was on a trade show floor. I walked by with my phone. I had my camera strapped to me, but it was just easier to take with my phone. So uh, only 32% of you got that right because you thought, oh, he took a portrait with his DSLR. But nope, just walking by, snap the shot. There it is. I don't even remember which trade show this was. It's probably Photoshop World. All right. Anyway, Iceland, same 7 plus. <laughs> so again, see, this time 68% of you got it right. But it was interesting on the other one most of you got it wrong so interesting all right sunset uh photo number five 76 percent of you got it right 24 percent of you got it not right this was the this was a ringer i shot this back in 2010 with an iphone 4 and my point of this shoot was i was doing a whole studio session on continuous light and what you could do with a smartphone back then. This was photo number six. You both, hey, you couldn't tell. 40, only 46% of you got it right. 54% of you, like it was almost split evenly. You couldn't tell. And that was the point back in 2010, 12 years ago, technology fooled half of you. All right, next. This one I kept telling you, look how sharp it is, because <laughs> I just sharpened it. It was taken with an iPhone 6S Plus, and this was a photo, this is a half of you, half half and half, like 48 versus 52. You, you couldn't decide. Um, there we go, Lisa, you know, smartphone shot, walked out, she was standing right there, shot on portrait mode, photo number eight. Uh, most of you got it right, 54% of you got it right. All right, um, the vault. Standing there checking in, pulled out my phone, shot it in raw, submitted it to Adobe Stock. 55% of you got it right. 45% of you thought it was a DSLR shot. All right, I'm starting to see a trend here. <laughs> Maybe you think what the rest of the photos are. They're all smartphone shots. This was at the Samsung Creative Galaxy event that I presented at, shot it with a Samsung phone. Yep, uh, and number 10, most of you got it right. 74% of you got it right. And my, maybe you remember that a bit. Now, this is what I, I kind of tried to fool you because, yeah, I did shoot this session with my mirrorless camera, but this first one I shot with my phone as we were getting set up. So only 29% of you got that right because I tricked you. I basically made you think, I don't, hey, he, I, was, I watched him. He shot that all with his DSLR or his mirrorless. I did, except that one. All right, and lastly, this was same Galaxy event, uh, shot on the roof, with, I just took the Samsung upstairs, got on the roof and shot it with my uh, Samsung. So you can put in the chat how many you got right or how you did, but it's interesting to just, uh, you know, whatever. So the point of this exercise was to let you know, and by the way, 51% of you got it right, so this was split right down the middle. Um, this is just to let you know, it's not about the, the phone. I showed you some old phone shots. I showed you some new phone shots. I showed you, uh, they were all phone shots. 
And of course, Roger got them all right um, or all wrong. He said all of them. So there you go. Get over the, it's a phone. Most of you got most of them right, half, half right. So get over the technology. The technology is here. Now let's talk about how to use it. Next. It's not about the hardware. It's how to use it. Hey, I even threw a slide in there to remind me. Okay, tips to take better smartphones. This is why you're here. This is what we're going to do for the next 23 minutes or so. 24 minutes. So we're all used to the tip, hey, when you're taking a selfie, people tend to like hold the phone up and shoot down on themselves because it doesn't show your double chin, your wrinkles, your whatever. That's a given. We're, you know, Kids basically taught us this when smartphones first came out. But we're here to go beyond taking selfies because I just proved to you that you can get quality work from your smartphone that looks professional without just taking selfies. So yeah, this is a good tip. This is not what we're here for. First and foremost, and I can't stress this enough, <laughs> clean the lenses before you start to take that first shot. Because chances are, it's been in your pocket, purse, bag, wherever, and you, at some point, touched it when you picked it up and you put fingerprints all over the lens. Or it just has grime over it. So if you're going to take something important, you're out on a trip, you're uh, at an event, you want to take some nice shots, take a lint-free cloth that you always keep with you and just go ahead and wipe it down. All right, next. And that's any camera, by the way, not just smartphones. But... That's the one that a lot of people forget, and then they wonder why their images kind of look blurry, smudged, have spots on them, whatever. It's because the camera's just not clean. Uh, yeah, I know, Sam, right? So basic, but we always forget to do it. This is the one I always forget to do. Clean the subject, especially touch screens, glass, things that you're shooting. Now, I gave you a worst case scenario here of something that's not clean, but we look at it, and it looks okay. But when you shoot it, you see every little speck on it. So wipe it down, whatever it is. If it's a person, look from head to toe, left to right, to make sure there's not a piece of lint, a hair, something on them that you can remove. And what you should never be saying when you're doing this is, I see it, but I can fix that later. Because what you're telling me is your time's not valuable. You're saying you're in such a hurry to take the shot, you'd rather spend minutes to hours later fixing it in Photoshop as opposed to a second to just remove whatever it is right off the bat. So don't, like, if you have a chance to make it clean, make it better, position it better, clean the table, clean the surroundings, whatever it is you're shooting, remove, you know, whatever distractions there are on the subject, do it first. You will thank me later because you won't be spending so much time in Photoshop, Lightroom, wherever, trying to get rid of it. All right, <laughs> this is depressing, I'm selling all my gear. No, it's not depressing, it's just, you, you now have the best of both worlds. You have a great camera with you at all times, you have a better camera when, you, when it needs to be better, and better lenses, better glass, so forth and so on. Better lighting, wipe it all down. Okay, turn on RAW, we talked about this earlier. If you have a 12 Pro, 13 Pro, or the new 14 Pro, and of course the max sizes too, the iOS now has RAW capabilities. They call it Apple Pro RAW. It's a setting in your camera settings that you can toggle on. If you don't have an iPhone 12, 13, 14 Pro, you have a 6S on up, you can still shoot in RAW, with an application. I'm gonna show you that in the Lightroom app. Matter of fact, I'll show it on the next slide. In the Lightroom app, you can actually turn on DNG. Samsung, Android, you can turn on DNG as well. So as a matter of fact, when I was shooting those images in New York uh, with the S22, that Samsung actually had a, um, a app dedicated for shooting RAW. Like you just downloaded that app and every image you would shoot with it would shoot in RAW. So I kind of like that too, as opposed to, because even when you turn this on, when you actually go to take the picture in your iPhone, there's a raw button at the top of the screen that you always have to turn on because they don't want you shooting, filling up your whole camera roll with images that don't matter that were shot in raw because they take up much more space. So you turn on raw, 
here in the settings, but then you still have to toggle it for each shot. You Well, once you turn it on and you keep shooting, but then once you turn the camera off, turn it back on, you have to turn it back on again. Because again, they don't want all the support calls. Hey, I'm out of space. Why am I out of space? All these receipts I photographed are <laughs> shot in RAW. So you're not taking images in RAW that don't matter. All right. Uh, if you don't have it built in, download Lightroom for your smartphone, iOS or Android. And at the very top, if, you're, if your phone's capable, which many of them are, most of them are, for at least the last five, six years, then you'll see a toggle under format, DNG or JPEG. So again, you can use, if you're just going to shoot JPEG, then you probably don't need the Lightroom camera. You can use the one that's built in. But if you want to take that professional shot and your camera doesn't support, your smartphone doesn't support RAW, uh, you can use this camera in the Lightroom app to shoot in DNG. And they'll also go straight to Lightroom and be backed up as well. All right. Um, let's talk about tips of photographing. When you're photographing people, so we're, we're used to these cameras now with all these lenses on the back of them, right? All these cameras, they're really cameras. They're not just lenses. They're cameras on the back of them. Um, each one is a different focal length. So when you first bring up your camera and, and tap the app to take a picture, you're usually by default in the wide angle camera. So you can get more of the subject. And that's okay, except when you're taking people. Because people look more distorted taken with the wide angle lens. If you ever noticed on an iPhone, when you switch to portrait mode, it's zoomed way in. That's because it's using one of the, it's using the telephoto lens and you've got to back up a little bit more, but it's going to always make your people look better. Why do you think they chose that lens to do portrait mode as opposed to the wide angle? Because it makes people look better. Let me prove it to you. Here's an image that was shot with the normal um, wide angle lens by default. Now it's a statue. And if I didn't show you any comparison, you would think that's the way the statue looks. But the face of this statue, we did this in a master class, I think, um, last year. The face of the statue actually looks like that. <laughs> so this is the difference just between the two lenses and a little bit of angling too. But if you want the person's face to look wide and distorted or fat, you know, the word that we hate to hear, then keep shooting them in the normal lens as opposed to telephoto and they will be wider people. All right, now I'll give you one more bonus tip. Selfies, great from shooting above, but you can also make images look more epic by shooting up. So we don't always, we don't want a camera down here because that'll make us look weird. But if the camera's gonna be far farther away, shooting up can actually look cool. So you have to use this one, Robzilla's in the house. You have to use this one with the proper angle. So before, this is what you would normally get, just turning the camera on on your phone. After, you switch to the telephoto mode or portrait mode, and then angling can make all the difference in the world. All right, get down low to make your subject look epic. And this is not just for people, this is for all things. If you have an opportunity to shoot something from above, straight on or down low, practice, like especially if you have time, take one of each. And I, I can't guarantee because I have nothing to do if you say I'm wrong, but I can pr almost guarantee that you're gonna like the ones you shot lower better because they look different. They look more professional. They look better than the shots you always see because we always see shots shot straight on or straight down. By the way, if you're a tall person, you're used to shooting things down because they're below you. And when you shoot things down, down on things, you make them look smaller. And I don't mean in a good way. So people tend to look shorter, stubby, like they just, I can't think of a better way to say it, but that's the way people look when you shoot down on them. All right. Um, so if you're shooting flowers, plants, whatever, don't shoot down on the flower, unless you're trying to get an angle where you're shooting straight down on it. But usually flowers look better when you're, or images look better when you get down to their level and you shoot straight on. Or get even lower and shoot up. So um, your images, your, your people, all your subjects can look better when you shoot straight up. Even 
architecture, even um, um, interior design. So they could have they could have just walked in the room and took this picture like we always would, but they got down low. They put the camera down on the floor and shot up, and it just makes the room look bigger. It makes the room look better. All right, and then you can even play with that aspect even more and get down to the what we call the ant view. The ant view looking up at you, the bug view. So the bug view is great when you're trying to do things like this, especially if you're trying, like if, if she wasn't there and you're just trying to get the flowers, the dandelions, whatever these are, and you, especially if you had good sun over them, you can create some epic shadows by shooting up at the flower as opposed to down. Now you might say, well, Terry, how can I get down under it and, and still see it and press the button? You can use a camera remote. If you're an iPhone user and you have an Apple Watch, your Apple Watch is actually a remote. There's a camera app on it. Um, they're Bluetooth remotes for both, both Android and iOS. And there's timers. So even if you didn't have any hardware, you didn't have any extra hardware, you just had your phone, set the timer. All, cam all phones have a smartphone timer. So set the timer for 10 seconds, walk away. That way it's also stabilized because you're not shaking it, you're not holding it, trying to get down, and then let it take the picture. If you are um, photographing little people, <laughs> children, small things, small things, get down to eye level. So they're doing yoga, but it also just makes the shot look better. Look at, as opposed to you standing above the, the child shooting down on the child. That would just look weird. But looking down at this, at the, or getting down to this level looks cute. It looks like the way it's supposed to. Yeah, she's looking straight at you, so make eye contact. Um, cars, all, all kinds of things can look better when you get down low. Now, you might argue, well, if it's convertible, then I, you know, I'm not going to see the convertible when I shoot down low. You have to adjust for the scenario. So if your scenario is you're trying to shoot or photograph something um, that you need to accentuate the top of it, then yeah, shoot the top of it or include the top. But if not, get down low. When, it, when a lot of people take pictures of food, food you're eating, you're out at a restaurant, you're having, you're living your best life, your social media, whatever. And what do we do? We sit down at the table, we put the phone right here, like, hang on, I got an extra phone here. We put the phone right here, like, oh yeah, I can, I can see it right there, there we go, okay, tap. And you're kind of like at a 45 degree angle. And yeah, if you wanna look basic, <laughs> take the shot that everybody takes and posts on Instagram, then yeah, shoot at that 45 degree angle while you're sitting there ready to eat. Let me get my food shot. No, don't do that. Either purposely shoot directly down on top of it or get down to the level of the food. Really get in close to the food and let people, let people make people think, hey, I'm hungry now. I want, I want some of these raspberries, whatever these are. And again, if you're gonna shoot straight down, then shoot straight down. You can make food and tables and things look great. Like professional restaurants. If you shoot them straight down or here's the other thing. If your food does something <laughs> like in this case, the noodle, the steam from the, um, from the uh, string beans is actually moving the, the noodles on top. Don't forget to shoot a video of that. If there's smoke, if there's fire, if there's flame, whatever it is, include it in a video because a still won't tell that story. If I just shot this as a still, you wouldn't know they were moving. You just can't, like, you, you can't miss that opportunity. So shoot a video. This was at a, uh, I think, a Thai restaurant. Anyway, this is a, this was an example I used last time. I, I did this kind of class. A friend of mine sends me this shot. I didn't include their faces, but a friend of mine sends me this shot. She says, "Can you clean up that stuff on the table?" And I, I just looked. I just put my head down. I was like, "Oh God, this is going to be a nightmare in Photoshop to do this." I took the challenge and I did it. And ultimately, they still weren't happy with the photo. Because when you have all this stuff on the table, no matter how amazing your subject is behind the table, people are going to be looking at all the stuff. Oh, what does she have? Oh, she didn't finish it. Must not have been good. Like it's just gonna like that's what you're gonna that's what the conversation is gonna be. So get it, like if you're if you're gonna have the waiter take the shot, wait for the waiter to clear the table or move to another table that's clean. Like, or move, get away from the table, whatever you need to do. Cause there's, there's nothing. That's the other thing. You want to take a better smartphone shot? What purpose does this table serve in this shot? None. Even if it's clean, none get away from the table or don't include the table. 
have have all three stand up and take the shot away from the table. So get rid of the junk. Now that was the first shot of getting rid of stuff in Photoshop and I put in some extra glass drinks and things like that that weren't there. And then I was like, nah, I don't like the water bottle either. So I got rid of everything. It was just, it never was great. It was just okay. Because you're always looking at the table thinking what was there, what wasn't there, so forth and so on. So don't make that part, don't make that the conversation. Watch your headspace. Now, I did this in studio and I left all that room above the subject. That's what I mean by headspace on purpose because this was for Adobe Stock. So this is called copy space at the top. But if I'm shooting portraits or photographing people, I don't want all that extra space anywhere above them. Now, it's okay to have space left and right. So it's okay to even have space at the bottom. But having extra headroom just is it's wasted space. And I, you know, I, I'm all for you know um, empty space in, in graphic design and artwork. But for photography, crop in tighter. As a matter of fact, don't be afraid to shoot very tight. Don't be afraid to get like zoom in. That's, you got that telephoto lens. You don't have to put the camera right up to their face. Just shoot telephoto and zoom in on it. Now, all the shots I showed you in the 12 shots that you picked, whether they were smartphone or, or, um, or professional camera, if it was an outside shot, it was outside. But this is shot from an elevator window. There's no reflection. There's no glare. I didn't Photoshop anything out of it. This is the way it came out of the camera because I put the, the camera right up to the glass. That way there's no room for anything to reflect into it. So that was, as a matter of fact, riding down the elevator, camera right up to the glass, raw, take the shot, there we go. So do what he's doing. He's put it, uh, I think he's doing this. Put it right up to the glass if that's the shot you want. Because no matter what the lighting is in the room, you turn off all the lights, something's going to reflect into that shot. Uh, same thing. This is through a window at night and um, camera lens right up to the glass. Same thing. San Francisco hotel room. I definitely was not on a balcony. I was, it was getting ready to storm, but I took the shot right from the hotel room, window. All right. Uh, this was in Paris from a restaurant window. Eiffel Tower at night. Um, sunset looks like. And there we go. Now, this should, like a professional would look at this and say, well, duh, <laughs> use a tripod. Of course, we use tripods when we need this shot to be as steady as possible. But we don't really think about tripods when it comes to smartphone photography because we're just used to taking it out, holding it up, snapping the shot. And nine times out of 10, that's okay. That's all you need. But if you're trying to take that, remember that shot I kept telling you, uh, uh, look at the train tracks, look how sharp it is. Because if you want an image to be that sharp, you got to have the camera be perfectly still long enough to take the shot. So if it's moving just a little, a fraction, something you can't even see yourself or can't feel, it's enough to introduce blur into your photo. So if you want a perfectly um, sharp image, take it with a tripod stay, or put the camera on a table does not move it, something so that you're not getting any movement whatsoever. Yep, a car holder, anything will work well. Uh, this, uh, this particular Archon tripod I like because it can wrap around stuff. You can do shots like this. You can put it in a regular tripod with the right mount and do a studio shot if you want. And uh, it's great for landscape work, especially at night because at, when you take a night shot, most of the newer smartphones, iOS and Android, have what they call night mode. They're designed to get better night shots. Well, they're getting better night shots by leaving the shutter open a little longer to get that better night shot. And guess what? If you ever took a night shot and you took it and it looked like your camera was moving in slow motion, like it, it didn't respond right away, that's what it's doing. It's actually letting more light in. So therefore, if you do that without a tripod, you're going to move within those few seconds. Even if you're breathing, you're going to move. So a tripod is going to give you a better shot, especially in the dark. Now, I don't always carry that Archon tripod with me, but I always carry my wallet with me. And this is always in my wallet. So for those of you who are like, what's that? It's a Pocket Tripod Pro. I don't know if I have the text upside down or not. Um, and this is the size of a credit card. And what it's designed to do 
So here, I'll demonstrate it for you. Actually, I can demonstrate it back on me. What it's designed to do, you turn it, and you could even pull it apart, but you turn it, and then you flip the sides up. And then once you flip the sides up, then it gives you this holder for your phone that works both portrait and landscape. So this way, you can, and this phone doesn't have a case on it. And you, by the way, it gives you all these little inserts for the size of your case. So it'll hold your phone, you can even tilt it, it will turn, and you can have your phone be at different angles, you can have your phone be landscape, you can pull these two things apart so you can get a, a more stabilization. And um, if you need to take that time shot down low or on a table or car or whatever, this is the tripod I always have with me because it's in my wallet. Okay, next up. <laughs> Your built-in flash should only be used as a flashlight. That's a joke. Um, they've gotten way better. So smartphone, smartphone flashes were notorious for giving you awful, awful light, lighted photos, like horrible shit, like this, where the subject looks like they were blinded with a light and it's got harsh shadows behind the subject. Now the, the, the technology has gotten better in smartphones where it tries to do a better job of, um, of giving you a, a better, um, tone color tone and like slowing the flash down to a strobe so forth and so on so it gives you a better shot but again only use this when you have to it's better to always use off camera um, or natural light and diffuse it whenever you can so they're taking this picture out in the middle of the day sun's harsh they're using a big giant diffuser you of course you're not going to carry one that big maybe you're going to carry one this small that folds down to be even smaller can fit in your pocket or your backpack, bag, or purse. And that way you always have something to diffuse or reflect light. So this is a reflector. They also make them small like that as diffusers. Um, so look at the difference. Before, harsh on camera light. After, where the light's off the camera, up and above. All right, and that's a big reflector. <laughs> that's like a 40 inch reflector. So you don't need one that big for a smartphone, but a reflector can make a big difference. So you wanna see the difference. I don't know if you, you can't see it on me. Nope, you can't see it on me. All right, we'll see it on the subject in, in a minute. Let's get through these last couple slides real quick, and then I can show you what I mean. Uh, if you're shooting video on a 13 Pro or 14 Pro, you have cinematic mode. So notice the, 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 what's the subjects becoming in focus just by tapping on the subject on the screen to put the subject in focus, focus. This is what motion pictures look like. They're basically, you have two people in the scene, but the one that's talking is the one that's in focus. The rest of the people are out of focus. You can now do that on your smartphone. It's crazy that you can do that on your smartphone. All right. Um, last but not least, oh, there's another one. So Lisa's in focus now. And lasso's in focus now, and Lisa's out of focus, and that's just tapping on the screen using cinematic mode. Okay, wrap up. So there's the, um, the smartphone photography gear guide um, QR code. <laughs> so for those of you that wanna, where did you get the reflector? What light do you use? What tripod? Where's the pocket tripod? It's all in there. Just um, point your phone to that, scan it, and then while you're doing that, I'm going to get set up for a last minute showing you uh, the Lightroom camera. If I can do this in time, I got like one minute left. Let's see if I can get this to work. All right, great, great, great. I'll bring my phone over. Phone, bring you over. There you are, phone, phone, phone. Okay, so bottom left, right-hand corner, you'll see the camera icon. If you tap the camera icon, that will bring up the Lightroom camera. So right now it's in the ultra wide. We're gonna switch it to, oh, I took a picture. We're gonna, <laughs> telephoto, there we go, telephoto. The big difference and again the reflector so holding it and reflecting
So you can see the difference in light just with that reflector. Look at, look at the right side of the photo and just bringing that reflector up can make all the difference in the world. So at the very top, you have your choice between uh, DNG and JPEG. And the other reason I like the Lightroom camera is there's a pro mode that lets you change your settings. So you can change your shutter speed, your ISO, your exposure compensation, your white balance, all directly in the camera. You get a rule of thirds. It's great to be able to do that. Okay. So that is my time, folks. Unfortunately, I am out of time. So hopefully you got something out of this. Hopefully you got some tips to make smartphone phones, smartphone photos better, regular photos better, whatever it is you're shooting. Hopefully you learned something from today. <clears throat> Cheers, everybody. Thanks for watching. And we'll stay tuned for the Daily Creative Challenge. Bye, everybody.